go ahead and like and subscribe and hit that notification bell for me. Uh, so Shay Shay has had a come to Jesus moment, not really a come to Jesus moment, but he's going to church now. He, he's going to church. I don't think he's going to ever be part of the religion, but he, he, he's he been to church a few times and he, he's feeling a little different, or at least he, he felt different on his take and gave a better take than I think anybody expected him to uh, on LeBron because he usually is just siding right with this man and making excuses like the media does. But LeBron said basically he had a, a real nice time playing with Miami. It was fun. Uh, the people were great. You know, it was like a summer camp. He had a, a good time there. But his career was going to be what it was going to be anyway. He was going to be this great regardless of uh, if Miami ever happened or not. And I actually like for a player to have this confidence in him to believe that regardless of their circumstances that led him to where they are now, if it would have been a different set of circumstances, he would still get there or get to a equivalent level. But what's wrong with giving credit where credit is due? Why do you always have to discredit the things that made you who you were? And it's funny that I said made you who you were because it was a, a Sports Illustrated article back in 2014. And LeBron basically said that. It's like playing with Miami raised me to be who I am now. You know, it's like it was like college. It's, it actually gave me the skills to go on from here. And now to discredit that just seems so disingenuous. Uh, disingenuous. Um, yeah, I don't understand it. it. It's nothing wrong with saying that, you know, hey, they, they are not solely responsible for my greatness. But, I mean... Without those two rings and without D-Wade getting up in his ass, pause, getting up in his ass, really being on him and teaching him how to win, how to understand the game better, he wouldn't even be able to take those skills back to Cleveland and make something happen. Um, I, I just think it is ridiculous. And, and on the Miami thing, too, like I said, he got those two rings, but according to LeBron, it was supposed to be not one, not two, not three, so on and so on. He's supposed to have like eight rings from Miami, but of course that didn't happen. But yeah, that's my my whole problem is what is wrong with giving credit? You know, I, I do agree with Arenas a little bit. I can't believe I'm saying that, but I agree with Arenas a little bit. As much as he needed Miami, Miami needed him. D-Wade was getting older. And then the season after he left, Bosch got hurt. I mean, they needed each other. They needed each other to make that thing work. But I think if it wasn't for the season leading up to that first ring where he was learning from D-Wade, they would have never had that. And LeBron wouldn't have those skills to be a leader when he went back to Cleveland. I just don't understand. And you know, it's funny, and, and I hate to say this, uh, but it's from the heart. I don't think certain people, certain types of people, should have the platform to say what to say. I'm speaking about Molly there because she was like, I don't think you guys understand what he is saying. And then read his comments just like we all heard him to be and known him to be, and we took him the same way. And of course, she was like, you never know what could happen. I, I know. Uh, <laughs> Never know what can happen, but, you know, you can use uh, deductive reasoning to see what happened before and where his mind was at and just how he played the game. And not to mention, when he was at Miami, LeBron got considerably bigger. I mean, you know, that's when he started juicing. And, I, I'm, I'm, you know, carrots and cucumbers and stuff like that. That's when he started juicing. And his physical game just got, you know, better and bigger. And I don't... <sighs> I really, I really couldn't see anybody else saying these comments. You know, Kobe was going to be the man that he is, that he became. But to say that I would have still won the same amount of rings, I would have still had the same uh, looks and accolades uh, without Shaq. It could be true. 
I just don't think he would say that. Who who would say that? Um, it doesn't hurt you. It doesn't diminish your greatness to give credit where credit is due. But that, those are the times that we're living in where everybody want to be self-made. And even a real self-made successful person will tell you that they were others along the way that helped them to get to where they're at. And I just think that is a, a childish way to look at things and just not realistic. You know, there there is an argument to be made that if LeBron never went to Miami and stayed with Cleveland and really hustled and ground with that team, first thing, if he, if he never went to Miami, he would definitely be more respected because one thing that happened after he went to Miami and came back, he learned how to take shortcuts. Everything was just about getting to this level or a perceived level and take shortcuts to build, you know, building these teams and and another thing, if he didn't go to Miami and get those two championships, I don't know if he would have the currency to actually build these teams. I don't know if he would get the same leeway to really mold and build these teams like he's, you know, these super teams that he started doing. So it's just foolish to act like that time wasn't pivotal to your growing. We can all speculate of what would have happened and LeBron was a great player out of high school. He would have been successful. But but let's not get this uh, misscrewed as Westbrook is successful. He's not in those GOAT conversations. KD is successful. He's not in those GOAT conversations. That time in Miami is what really helped him become, or at least I'm not going to say helped him become, but I think that's part of what made people start looking at him a certain way. If he didn't have those first two championships, I don't think he would have got that third or it wouldn't have came as soon. But even if he did, who's in the GOAT conversation with one or two championships? I just think it's, it's short-sighted and just a, a, a clown position to act like Miami wasn't wasn't a big part of who you are now. It was a good time. Those people are great. I had fun. It was more than that. And it, like I said, it doesn't make you a, a worse basketball player. It doesn't take you down a, a peg or anything for you to, to admit that. What is wrong with admitting that people help you? I know. I don't know about you, but I've put people up on game in, in just different areas of life. And... And, you know, imagine teaching somebody how to read and then they go on to be a a, a, a successful business person. I ain't helping with their business, but I, if, if they didn't know how to read, they probably wouldn't be able to make these contracts, sign these contracts, and they just leave you out of your, you know. I, I would have still been successful without OTA telling me how to read. I I doubt it. I doubt it. And it, it doesn't mean that I made you successful. But... Why not give me credit for helping you learn how to read? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, let me know what y'all think. Should, should this rise to the level of scrutiny that, that it's getting? Uh, or was LeBron just trying to say that he would be great regardless and he's a bad speaker and doesn't know how to articulate the things he's trying to say? Or, or are we just looking at this too much because... It's, it's the goat. It's the king, and it, it's hard to hard to not scrutinize the stuff this man says because he says so much stupid shit. But anyway, thank you so much for your time. Like I said, I'm still on vacation. That's gonna be it for today. Thank y'all so much. Love you guys. I will see you in the next one. Everyone have a good day. Peace.